Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know what? Uh, in my opinion, the NBA Finals are over. I believe the Cleveland Cavaliers have been checkmated. I don't believe there's any coming back for them. Right? I'll be surprised if any of the remaining games are that competitive. Let me point out, too, I'm not saying this as someone who even supported the Golden State Warriors that much during the season. Warrior fans here online know that's not the case. In fact, you know, I privately told some gambling types I thought Cleveland was a live dog in this series. Right? I got Cleveland earlier in the season at pretty good odds. And I thought Cleveland was the live dog. Keep in mind, Vegas had Cleveland as the underdog in this series. Right? I believe Cleveland has the best player on the planet, LeBron James, who, in my opinion, was the MVP of the NBA. Right? And I thought they had a secret sauce. Right? You have some bigs. Muscov, he's taller than advertised, plays better defense than advertised. How this guy went undrafted is a mystery to me. And you had Tristan Thompson, who, you know, is a big who actually can guard guards. He's very mobile. He's excellent on the offensive glass, right? You look at the bigs on Golden State, I thought they'd have some problems there, right? Andrew Bogut, not much of a score. Harrison Barnes... A slender guy, unproven commodity, right? Well, let me say this. So I got Cleveland at leverage at the beginning of the tournament. By leverage, I just mean, obviously, at greater than even money, right? Cleveland jumped out. You're able to get them at great odds, right? The first quarters of all of these games the first three games at least, were Cleveland quarters. Cleveland looked great in the first quarter. The pacing was a Cleveland pace, right? Cleveland narrowly loses game one. Cleveland then wins the next two games. But at that point, the writing was on the wall. A lot of life is about trial and error. Steve Kerr, in my opinion, didn't have a clue how to deal with Cleveland at the opening of game one had no clue right um, LeBron James was having his way he was either scoring 40 odd points or he was getting a triple double right well he stumbled uh, Steve Kerr stumbled into the winning formula for which Cleveland has no answer right it's this small lineup Understand, Cleveland simply doesn't have the guys to deal with the small lineup because of injury, right? If Kyrie Irving were there, it'd be different. Cleveland would have flexibility. If Kevin Love were there, it'd be different. Love has some height. Love himself can hit threes. They don't have those two guys there. Right? They're running an eight-man rotation. Some of the guys in their rotation can't play defense. Right? Mike Miller can't stop you or I defensively. Right? So the problem is you have Golden State, a team that can run up and down the court, right? putting racehorses out there, creating obvious mismatches in Cleveland's favor. But understand the mismatches destroy Cleveland's pacing. Cleveland wants a slow pace. Right? When Golden State has some undersized person, like Draymond Green sticking Muscov, and when Cleveland throws the ball inside the paint to Muscov, and when Muscov puts up his career high in points, understand that shortening the possession time for the Cavaliers, right? The Cavs want to use 20 seconds of every possession. They want a slow game. They want both teams to be struggling to get to 100 points in the game. They don't want a setup where LeBron James is no longer 
the key offensive weapon, right? People aren't standing around watching James back down. Um, Igudala. Instead, you have a situation now where you have a guy who's open, who has a clear shot under the basket in Moscow. They're throwing the ball into Moscow, who's scoring. You're getting twos. The problem is you're ending the Cleveland possession inside of 15 seconds. You're playing into Golden State's pace. Suddenly, game four, Golden State, after dominating the fourth quarter of game three with a small lineup, Golden State in game four suddenly throws up 31 points in the first quarter. Suddenly, the game's more up and down. Suddenly, the chief offensive weapon on the Cavaliers is Muscov, not LeBron James. Right? That's the game that Golden State wants. When Cleveland cuts their time of possession and starts shooting earlier in the 24-second clock, they're forced to run up and down the court, right? That tires out their starters. Folks, they only have two or three guys coming off the bench. And some of those guys, quite frankly, are well past their primes, right? James Jones, Mike Miller, right? The other problem, too, is when you have long guys, like Sean Livingston of Golden State, able to come out to the three-point line to actually D up J.R. Smith. And when J.R. Smith's shot disappears, then you have even worse problems. Right? I don't know what Cleveland can do. In fact, I personally don't think Cleveland can do anything to stop the bleeding. Understand, Golden State is so much the better team in the eyes of seasoned gamblers that down two games to one they were favored in game four i hope you took my advice if you had money on cleveland actually hedge the play right cash out take your winnings by taking golden state at minus 120 before game four right for that game four well let me say this you're not going to get Golden State at minus 120, excuse me, minus 120 to win the series, right? This way you were completely hedged, right? This way you were able to leave with winnings because you're never going to get Golden State at minus 120 to win the series ever again for this series, right? I'm expecting Golden State to run away with game five in Golden State, right? Because once you start allowing Muscov to score early in the 24-second clock, I don't think Cleveland knows what to do. Right? I don't think Cleveland has the guys on their team to play small ball. Right? The pacing which Cleveland needed to control is no longer there. Right? They can't control it. Let me say, too, that in addition to the small lineup, Kerr has made a couple other changes that really have changed the game, right? One is David Lee. He's actually brought in a guy from outside Golden State's rotation who's actually now a scorer inside, right? Think about it. They don't mind that David Lee can't play defense because they're willing to give up points inside. Right? And so David Lee has given Golden State a better passer in the low post and more offensive production. They've also taken out Andrew Bogut. Understand, if you look at the points per 100 possessions, Muscoff was killing Bogut. Right? Killing him in terms of what the teams were doing, right? When Muscoff and Bogut were on the court together, I believe per 100 possessions, Cleveland was scoring something like 30 more points. Well, now they've put 
Bogut in mothballs, right? They're living off of a small lineup. They're allowing Muscov to score points early in the 24-second clock, right? On their end, they have a better offensive player than Bogut, now hovering around the low post in David Lee. That's opening everything up. Now the Cavaliers have to worry about someone in the low post scoring. So now suddenly outside on the perimeter, Steph Curry is getting open looks. Look at yesterday's box score. Klay Thompson didn't even have that good a game. Warriors were up by 20-odd points late in the game. Right? You know, so I'll just say this. We're also at the point in the series where mathematically it has to go at least six games. Now, we've seen teams with slim benches literally collapse late in playoff series this year. You don't even have to go past this year. Look at the Clippers against the Houston Rockets. Clippers had a very thin bench. Right, big baby, uh, coach's kid, Austin Rivers, right, very thin bench, Jamal Crawford. All I could say is the Clippers hit the wall. They had that series practically won. It fell apart on them. Right, the starters needed rest. They hit the wall around game five of that series, right? I believe the Clippers are up in that series in game six fall apart and then of course they had nothing in game seven right well all I'm saying is I believe the Cavs are hitting the wall right now right they're tired they don't have a bench Golden State's rested they have a 10-man rotation right I'm expecting the Cavaliers just like yesterday to come out and look good early. I believe the Cavs score the first seven points of the last game. And then to slowly just run out of gas. Think about it. The game before this last game, weren't the Cavs on fumes in the fourth quarter? Then, of course, we get to this game. Cavs jump out. They're up 7 nothing. What more could you want? You have a great town. You have fans there. You know, they're looking for the first title in half a century. Right? With the fans behind them, with the lead, the Cavs slowly gave it away. By the time you're looking at the second half, they're out of gas. Right? I believe we're at that part of this series. Right? Golden State right now is about a 4-1 to one favorite. In fact, a little bit worse than that. To win game five. Understand, seasoned gamblers know. Golden State is more likely than not to win Game 5, right? I'm not sure if this series even makes it back to Golden State, right? Game 6 is going to be interesting, right? Let's just say if the dam breaks and if Cleveland's as tired as I think they are, and keep in mind, they weren't that tired games one and two because of the record rest both teams had before game one. Well, they're tired now, right? Kyrie Irving got hurt during these finals, right? These guys weren't expecting this. They have no respite. Now Golden State has found a way to up the pace. In my opinion, Cleveland can't survive. For gamblers wondering who's going to win this series, let me say, and keep in mind, I'm someone who thought Cleveland was a live dog, who had money on Cleveland, who cashed out after Game 3. I think Golden State now wins this series. Right? I think these odds are correct. I don't think Cleveland can bounce back, and I say this with the series tied two games apiece, right? I think this is as good as it's going to get for Cleveland in this series.
I expect Golden State to run away with Game 5, right? Things could change based on injuries. If Golden State suffers a Kyrie Irving-type injury, where a key player, right, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Andre Iguodala, who has been tremendous, right? If a key player gets hurt, okay, things can change, right? If someone gets suspended, okay, things can change. But if everyone stays healthy, I think Golden State runs away with this. I think Golden State is the next NBA champion. I think Golden State wins the series. Let me hear from you. Today is June the 12th, 2015. Let me hear from you. And keep in mind, I'm not a Golden State homer. Folks, I'm a Knicks fan. Right? I'm not a Golden State homer. Right? I thought Cleveland was the value play at tip-off of game one. I'm just telling you Steve Kerr has stumbled into the winning formula. Cleveland doesn't have the bench at this point to adjust to what Golden State is doing. And you're finding out that the secret sauce to the Warriors are guys like Igudala, Draymond Green, Sean Livingston. All of them now are coming to the forefront. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Go back and look at my earlier NBA videos here online. I was a big skeptic of the Warriors. I think they got this. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments. Thanks for stopping by.